Hello everybody and welcome to another one of our leadership training videos. In these leadership training videos, I share with you from my own personal insights and my experience and background, some of the areas that I think are really key as far as leadership training is concerned. Aspects that you should consider, integrate, amend, adjust, put your own flavor into it, whatever you want, but just some takeaways and just reminders if you are a leader already, or you are wanting to be a leader, or you manage people, that's okay here as well. Or if you're an entrepreneur, you run your own business, large or small. Just a few snippets for a few minutes to explain to you the keys, I believe, in terms of leadership. So you'll find leadership traits, leadership qualities, leadership skills to become a more effective leader, become a more compassionate leader, to become a more emotionally engaged leader, whatever it is. This is the place. I encourage you, please, to feel free to comment, like, share, offer questions, subscribe to the channel so you know when other videos are becoming available. And so by way of introduction, my name is Chris Igwe. I have over 35 years experience leading training and developing teams across Europe, Middle East and Africa, and primarily in five major European markets that I've lived and worked in. We're going to take a topic today which I think is the basis of leadership. It's one of the fundamental objectives of leadership, which you may forget, and it's simply this. Our role is to create an environment to get the best out of people. I prefer to use best as opposed to most, because best means that they are giving you their absolute best. Most in terms of more, people can always give you more. But getting the best, sometimes that is protected dearly by people because they won't give it to you just like that for reasons I'll explain to you in a minute. So our role as leaders, and that is our single most important objective, there are many, but I believe this is one of the keys. The single most obje important objective is to create that environment that people grow. They grow into leadership or they grow as individuals in the team. And here are some of the reasons and approaches. So the first thing you may say is, well, how can I do it? And I'd invite you to think carefully and integrate these into your own world, your own leadership style and whatever it is you're doing, because maybe some of these you, I help you realize, I hope anyway, that you're not doing it or you're not doing it as well as you should or as often as you should. So we'll just run through some. There are many others, like with all these things, I can't unravel everything, but I just want to give you the main pointers to consider. Inevitably, and I put it right there at the beginning because it's fundamental, it's open communication. There's got to be an open communication that you give towards that individual, but also to the team. There's got to be that open two-way communication. You've got to be accessible. So if you're super busy, or like me, you travel a lot and you're busy, You've still got to help people understand that you can be reached, you are accessible, that you will make time for them. It's the time that you give them. Time is so important and so valuable that you can't just skim over it. You can't just say, okay, I'll give you five minutes. If you keep saying, I'll give you five minutes, to my point about you changing your attitude, if you keep saying, I'm going to give you five minutes, somebody's going to say, I'm not that important to him or to her. I don't really value the time I spend. How can I do five minutes with them? One-to-one -one sessions, really important. People want to tell you things that they're not comfortable or not prepared to tell in a bigger group. So even if in a meeting, department meeting, company meeting, team meeting, whatever it happens to be, you say, okay, has anybody got questions? Fire away, I'm here. Not everybody's going to speak up at that time. Some people need that one-to-one -one where they're more comfortable they may be timid. Maybe it takes them time to unravel their words. So you will need to give them one-to-one -one sessions. Acknowledge people. I've mentioned this in a, in a previous leadership training videos. Acknowledging people, not just for being there, but by what they've done, what they've achieved, how they're expressing themselves in the team. Acknowledge people, acknowledge individuals. Maybe even as simple as saying hello when you walk into the office. I'd hope that that's what you do from the receptionist or whoever you meet 
at the front door right the way through to your team or your department, acknowledging people both physically and in terms of what they've done. Because you want to create an attitude, and this is for you, an attitude of nurturing people. I'm nurturing, I'm helping them, I'm encouraging them, I'm supporting them, I'm available for them. That's nurturing, just like, like you nurture children or loved ones, nurturing. Because at the end of the day, the results that you want to get out of creating this environment for people in which they can be the best and provide and give you the best is, here are some things I've listed. The results are you get greater commitment from them, greater commitment. And that's so important because going back to me traveling, for example, I want to know that when I'm out of the office, that same commitment, that same desire is there. I don't have to be physically there. I just want to know that it's there. You get greater engagement from them. If you have those one-to-one -one sessions or availability or opportunity to speak, they provide you with the opportunity to engage with individuals. And there's more interaction in the team as well. It creates harmony or balance. It starts to feel effortless. And I've seen that in the teams that I've created and provided this environment for growth is it seems effortless. So whilst you're trying to push water uphill or pushing things in a way that you think, oh, this is really hard work, why am I doing it? It becomes effortless when everybody's on the same wavelength. You create mutual trust, which again, I've talked about before. Trust is something that you can't find or get that easily. You have to earn it, but it's a mutual, so it's two way. They trust you and you trust them. And then of course, which is going with ha harmony, this happiness because everybody wants to feel happy in what they're doing. So how does that conclude? A few more points, loyalty. And this is so important, loyalty. It's sometimes overlooked, but when the going gets rough or tough for you as a leader, things are not going the right way in terms of performance, in terms of results, in terms of targets and objectives, whatever it happens to be, you will hit bumpy roads, rough waters. And that's when you want to know the loyalty is there. The team is absolutely behind you. It doesn't matter which way this is going to go. Even if the ship is going to sink, they are right there with you. Absolute loyalty, which comes from all the previous things I've talked about. It means they work harder for you. Nobody looks at the watch and says, okay, it's six o'clock or seven o'clock or whatever. I've got to go. People will work harder for you by nature because they're committed to what you're doing. They'll get, they'll respect you a lot more, which I've talked about as well before, which is what you want is this respect. And perhaps most importantly, the team, which is where the effortless part comes in. The team works together and in the same direction. Because at the end of the day, you want amazing results. You want not just results, you want fantastic. Remember, you are building an incredible team or you're part of an extraordinary team or you have a role within that. You want to create and obtain great results, not average results, not good results, but great results because there'll be the factors that you will be measured on and you measure yourself on, which are the revenues, the profits, hitting the goals and the objectives or the targets that you set out. All that is good. But you'd also have two really important elements. One is employee satisfaction. And often, depending on how big your HR department is, they'll run from time to time employee satisfaction um, assessments to see how happy they are in your team. And I've had situations where, in terms of employee satisfaction, it's been so good that others have wanted to join my team or my department from outside. So we become a reference because we're a cool bunch. We understand, we work hard, we play hard. We enjoy each other's company. Yeah, there's some moments of tension. That's like any family or any situation, but people want to join the team or the company or the department. And that's really fantastic. And of course, the final thing is retention. So it means that those who might be thinking of moving to another company will say, I actually like it in this team. I like it in this department. I like it in this company. I want to stay there. So these are all the different aspects of you creating that environment 
within which people can learn and understand and grow because your objective is to help individuals grow. And as you help them grow, your team grows, not necessarily in size, but in performance, and most importantly, working together for the objectives that you've set. So I hope this helps and provides you with some insights and thoughts. Please feel free to like, share or comment, and of course, subscribe to the channel and come back so you can hear other videos or look back on other videos as well. So until the next time, Thank you.